G'day guys, Sales20 here, and welcome back to this new series that I haven't named yet, but I will be naming it in the next episode, Pinky Promise. Uh, yes, we still haven't named this series yet, or this map, and it's not that I don't like any of your name suggestions, I just haven't read them yet. I am recording these first three episodes before reading any comments. But we will be naming it in the next episode because... I would have read all your comments by then, so don't bother leaving any name suggestions for this map or this series in this episode because I would have already named it by then. Uh, but you can definitely leave some name suggestions for anything that you see me build in this episode or the last episode. So if you see a river or a mountain and you think, ooh, I reckon you should name it this then totally hit me up in the comments because this series is very much about naming everything, making every part of the map feel very unique and to the point where you should be able to recognize everything if you were to follow along and it's going to be a lot of fun and we're only about three episodes in. And next week will be the last time we work on the map and then after that we're into the save game and we're going to be working on the city layout. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on making the transition between a couple of different types of environments. We've got temperate, there's like agriculture farmland, which is what I'm working on at the moment. And then we're going to be around the coastline, working on some forested area, some big mountains, and trying to figure out how we're going to make all that transition to this outback, which is going to be very dry, and that's going to be very difficult. And, you know, so often I use Google Earth to get inspiration for my builds, but this time around, particularly for this episode, I was checking out the Red Dead Redemption 2 map because those transitions within the space, it's pretty spot on. And it's pretty much what I'm trying to achieve within this map, particularly when it comes to transitions between different environments and the different types of landscapes that merge into one another. I think it's pretty spot on. So we're going to be doing a lot of references to Red Dead in this episode and it's going to appear again, no doubt, in other episodes. I have to give you a bit of an insight to what I'm actually thinking because I'm actually recording this commentary and looking at this footage probably about a month and a half after recording all this and building it. And I have to admit, I'm not 100% I'm not sold on the work that I do around some particular areas. I'm going to be talking more about that when we get to it on screen and way more when we do the next episode. But in a nutshell, there's parts of the deserts that just don't work for me. And I think I'm going to go back and change it. And that's kind of crazy because when I finished, when I was first working on this and I finished it and I looked at the map, I was like, damn, this is good. This is exactly what I want. But now looking back at it, I'm thinking there's just something not right about this. So I'm going to talk a bit more about that when we get to it. So far, what we've been up to is I've been working around the area we left off last week. Around here is a dam. This is going to be the main energy source and water source for the city that's going to be closer to the ocean. This area around here, we're also going to have quite a lot of agriculture. It's going to be very rural. I'm going to probably have a small town around here too, which would be quite nice. And I don't really know what that town's main function or purpose is like of course there's going to be a lot of farms around here but I would also like that town to have something else going for it but this area I mean it's very reminiscent of the types of agriculture you find in New South Wales I'm thinking about drives out to Bathurst and Orange uh, I used to do that drive quite a lot and you've got these a lot of farms out this way a lot of windy roads quite hilly in these areas too and I really wanted to reflect that so I really feel like this area best reflects the types of agriculture you find in rural New South Wales, maybe Victoria, Queensland, east coast of Australia. But then this one area around the base of this mountain, I decided to change the mountains so that they were a little bit more of a cliff face. And I was taking some ideas from the Megalong Valley around the Blue Mountains, but there's so many areas around rural Australia, and particularly around New South Wales, where you do have this type of landscape and it's nice to put that around here and it sort of adds to that making so many areas on this map have very distinct characteristics. You know, I could have left this as just another ridge, but I decided to turn it into a bit more of a distinct cliff face. And the really nice thing about that mountain as well is one side of the mountain is where the city is going to be and the mountain looks very different to the other side of it. So on one side is where the city is and it looks more like some big mountain in the distance. And then on the other side you have 
a bit more of an eroded cliff face that looks very different. So you're kind of serving two purposes on either side of the mountain. And that's something I'm going to do a fair amount of to serve the purpose of perspective, but also those different types of characteristics of the landscape. So that we have different types of vibes in different areas. And I'm hoping that's going to be a really good way of making those transitions uh, a little bit easier as well. So now what we're up to is I'm just working on my theme mixer to just play around and see if I can get some red earth type of vibe going in some areas. So I'm just having a bit of an experiment and I'll revisit this idea at a later stage in this episode. And something else that I've done is I've used the resource brush to figure out where I want some rivers and streams to go. Uh, and basically this is just to get an idea of where some valleys and mountains can also sit because the rivers and the streams are going to be creating those valleys and those mountains. And this is something that's really important to then create those different types of environments. So where the, the streams start is where the mountains are and there might be like a forest up here, a waterfall. And then as they flow down the mountain, they get bigger and they carve more land. So you might have a valley that's turned into maybe a canyon or where it meets the ocean. Maybe there's a swamp down there. And that's the sort of thing that I've been trying to take inspiration from uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 map. It does a really good job at exaggerating those changes and those differences between the different types of environments. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm doing a massive exaggeration. You know, you don't have these types of transitions and changes so close to one another in such a small footprint. But I'm trying to do that because we don't have a huge amount of space to create those type of areas. And there's a couple of things that I want to fit around here too. So around the desert, I would really like a canyon that was carved out by a river and and I'm trying to think about where I can place that. So you can actually see I've, I've put it right up against this mountain here. But it just wasn't working in that location. I felt like it was too much of a sudden change from this forest. And then all of a sudden you're in the desert. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. So I ended up changing where that location was. And I think this is where part of the problem started to arise. Where, you know, I'm trying to fit in this desert. But I just don't think it's... I don't think it's going to work to the standard that I want it to. Uh, but you can really see that I'm trying to fit in these concepts within this area. I'm thinking, okay, if the river's going to flow around here, then where's it going to end up? You know, how big is it going to be at the end of this thing? And also perspective. I'm trying to still figure out how big some areas are going to be. You know, it's so hard without buildings and houses and roads. You know, I've got a couple of roads around, but they're like sometimes not that helpful. And then now that I'm thinking back to or looking at this footage and thinking, okay, I want to change a couple of things, you know, and it's been a month and a half since I've built on this map and I was so satisfied with it when I first finished it. You know, part of me just think that there just needs to be a certain amount of time between finishing an area and going back and changing it or reflecting on it. You know, I really feel like you do need that time period to reflect on the things that you build because there are definite areas on this map that I am 100% like, I'm not going to change. I'm really happy with how they look. This area that I'm working on right now is one of those areas. But, you know, there's just areas that I think that I also need to build. You know, I need to build a city to get an idea of how the scale of this whole thing is going to take shape. And I think that we're not going to be able to go back and work on these areas until I've actually started to work on the city. Now, before I start talking about this mountain, because this mountain definitely needs some explaining, this map is going to be on the Steam Workshop. I was meant to mention that way before <laughs> this period in this episode. It's so much to talk about in these episodes. It's crazy. But if you're so keen to jump in this map and test it out for yourself and build your own city, it will be up on the Steam Workshop as soon as I finish building it. But that is a pretty big reason why I wanted this map to be pretty pretty much ready um, but you know besides the deserts and some little bits and pieces I'm going to change it's going to be pretty much the same map so to talk a bit about this mountain uh, this mountain is going to be probably one of the most well-known mountains within this map whatever town we end up building down here the one of the big reasons one of the big draw cards for the tourism of that town is this mountain I reckon a lot of people come to this town to climb this mountain, to explore it, the rainforest below it. I think that's going to be a really big draw card and a really big natural feature within the map. 
And I was trying to get some ideas for this mountain, so I didn't start off like this. It was actually looking very different to the way that it ended up taking shape. But I ended up finding this really cool mountain range uh, called the Stirling Mountain Range in Western Australia. And there's this one mountain called the Bluff Knoll, and it's just, it's so distinct. Like, it's awesome. And I was like, oh, you know what, I'm going to try and build something similar. So what I've done is I've just terraformed it, and it's pretty much how I like it and pretty much how I want it to be, but I'm going to come back here when we start working on the actual save game, and I'm going to put some, well, I'm going to PO some um, grey flame rocks just super big and make that cliff face really just detailed and just make that mountain just look super nice. So that's my idea behind that mountain and no name behind it. So if you've got some ideas for some names, hit me up. And on the topic of names, I would also like to include some Aboriginal names for the places that we are building on this map. A lot of areas within Australia still go by their Aboriginal name and I think it'd be really nice to also include that within this map. But I don't want to just pull random names out of nowhere purely based on the fact that I just like the sound of it. I think if I'm going to choose a name, like an Aboriginal name for something that I'm building, I think it's going to be more appropriate if I choose it if I'm directly building something or using something as inspiration and then I choose that name for it. So for instance, if I build something like Uluru, then I would call it Uluru. But I wouldn't just call something completely random Uluru on the map, purely based on the fact that I like the sound of the name. But yes, definitely want to be including a lot of Aboriginal names within the map and potentially even calling this whole region, this whole map, something in an Aboriginal language. And I do say an Aboriginal language because there are hundreds of different Aboriginal languages in Australia. So if you have any ideas, uh, do please let me know. So now we're beginning work around what I want to be kind of known as more of the outback of this map. And the idea behind this is I wanted this earth, this the, the ground color to be more of that reddish color that you typically find in the middle of Australia. But I mean, really most of Australia is very very dry and you know we are very well known for having this type of earth that is just so red like if you've ever been out to or you've ever seen pictures of the desert in Australia I kind of wanted to represent that and, you know I think this is where the problem lies with the scope of this project and where I need to maybe cut back on trying to embed as many different ideas or as many different places within Australia into this single map because I don't know how possible it is and I think it kind of just makes it a little, I don't know, disjointed. Maybe it just doesn't really work all together. And again, I'm going to talk more about this in the next episode. But it is around this point where I've got big question marks about some of the things that I build. So what we are working on is I wanted to include a canyon, like a desert canyon that had a very windy river winding its way through it. And this mountain range that was going to be very different to the other types of mountains that already exist on the map. So these mountains are kind of going in an op like a different direction to the others. You know, all the other mountains are sort of following along a particular path, whereas these ones are just a little bit more randomly placed. And I've done that because it's kind of how they look. I mean, these mountains that uh, you typically find within the desert Australia, I mean, most of Australia is covered in desert and have mountain ranges that are very similar to this. And you can see that they've been created in such a different way to other mountains that you'd find around the coastline. And I did want to try and show that difference between the two. And again, this is where I think we're trying to maybe include too much of Australia into this map. But I did want to try and include this, or I wanted to have a crack. I just wanted to see if I could create something that was similar to this within City Skylines. And in particular, I was looking up at the Kimberleys. This is an area that I've been many years ago, like one of the awesomest places I've ever been. Uh, but the mountain range up around here is just so interesting. And, you know, where it meets the ocean, I thought was a really great source of inspiration because that is a very similar area to where we're working. We're right next to the coastline. So I thought I could get some ideas of how it interacts with the coastline. And I think the tricky part is, is that even in real life, it doesn't look like it doesn't look right. You know, it's sometimes when you look at things in on Google Earth, you look at the landscape and you know, trying to find inspiration, trying to find, you know, justification for some of the things that you're trying to achieve within this game and you find it and then you go, that still doesn't look right. Like, why is a mountain or why is this 
area still look as if someone's lazily placed it next to, you know, it just doesn't look right, you know? Sometimes you can see where mountains are meant to go and where oceans and rivers are meant to go. They all make sense. And then sometimes you look at Google Earth and you go, that doesn't make any sense to me. And this is just one of those areas that doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. But of course, there are reasons behind the landscape, but it, it like just doesn't make any sense to me. So it's really hard, kind of hard to get an idea of how to be placing these things down. But this is my justification behind these mountains looking the way that they do. And look, before I start talking about this stream that I've also included, because this is kind of nice, I'm doing this trick here where I am deleting, you will use move it to delete all the foliage around here. And then I am using the fertile land resource to paint down this reddish earth. And just so, so, so slightly, only just minuscule amounts. And then I place back all, well, pretty much just, just press um, undo, the undo button, and all my trees come back, and the forest remains where it is. And that's using a mod called the Lock Forestry mod, and it does exactly that. You can't otherwise do that. You won't be able to see that fertile color come through with all these trees around. So that's just one technique, one mod that um, allows me to get more out of my resources. But that, um, that fertile land is very tricky color to get right because as you can see when it's you know used in a like when it's too strong it kind of comes out a bit purple like fluorescent and then when it's used too light you don't even see it and then you know against greens it turns to another color so it's really tricky to get that exactly how I want it to and I dare say I'm gonna have to come back so often and just readjust places and that's why I'm really calling a lot of this just placeholders just to get an idea of where I want things to go and to see how things are going to take shape. And then we kind of come back and detail it up just a little bit more. But yeah, that stream. So that starts up at that mountain range. And as you can see, it's so super small and then like spirals its way down through that canyon, uh, which is where I want to be placing some sort of national park. Um, at least, you know, something like that. I think it'd be really nice. And then this river turns into a, a big waterfall, which I, again, really wanted to include some sort of big desert waterfall because we have a lot of really spectacular ones in Australia. And I just think it'd be really nice to have something like that that was really just dedicated to National Park, which is a huge factor in Australia. We have so many great national parks that I also would like to include. But this national park too is also really great. You know, this, this area of nature that we're not gonna have any sort of cities or, you know, much infrastructure around. This will also be really nice to create that barrier between some of the other areas. So there is gonna be a town that's next to that waterfall, although like way closer towards the ocean. And I'll talk a bit more about that shortly, but the, you know, there's gonna be a huge difference or huge distance, I should say, between that town in the desert and then the town that's right on the coastline um, that's in the forest and I think that's you know this, having this mountain range here and having that space really shows that there is that great distance between the two all right so this area here is where I would like that town to sit so this town is going to be you know potentially one of the largest towns within this map um, and you know I can really get away of doing that because it is just so far away from the city that's you know I can actually get a little bit bigger with this one and that distance between the two I think is going to be totally fine uh, I think they'll be able to still feel quite big where they are but then the distance will make them feel quite far away but this town I wanted it to have a Western Australia coastline vibe uh, and in particular I think it'd be really cool for this town to be like dedicated to exporting ore but then it also, I mean, it's open. I, I'm quite open to what it could be exporting or what the dedicated industry within that town could be. But this town is very much in the outback. It's one of those towns where the desert meets the ocean, where that red earth meets this very crystal clear ocean. And it is this really interesting contrast between the two colors. And then if you have an industry as, in, as part of the mix, it's really quite bizarre. And I would like to represent that. I think it'd be really cool and, you know, trying to turn a profit with this town and, you know, seeing what sort of effect it has on the environment around here. You know, it would also be nice to have some sort of, you know, really nice tropical environments that also sits around here. And I just think the town will be very different to anything else that I would like to build on this map. So there's not going to be a huge amount that really represents that desert. 
but this town is going to definitely um, definitely show what it's like to live in a place like that. So yeah, we'll be definitely doing something along those lines. Now, as we're starting to get closer to the end of the episode, I'm just starting to fill out this area, figuring out the blend of colors, the transition from the green grass to this very brown earth. And you can see that I'm using this really great trick by just having the maximum size circle that I could possibly use. And then I'm using that to create this brown earth color, trying to figure out that transition that we're going to be making. But this is like the best way I can possibly get that color effect, that really nice gentle blend. Um, but you can see that there is rings around these circles that I'm creating. But then if I just create this, uh, this blending tool, this like much smaller brush and just painting in between, you can make a pretty seamless type of um, transition. And now for the final thing that we're going to be creating on this map, or at least for this episode, is going to be this lake that's going to sit right on the water's edge along this beachfront. And this is inspired by the Pink Lake in Western Australia. No doubt if you have Instagram and you follow EarthPix, you've probably seen an image of this. This is a very photogenic, pretty unreal looking lake in Western Australia, Some a place that I've always wanted to go to. However, apparently, and a couple of friends have been there recently and confirmed this, but apparently it's no longer pink. And it hasn't been pink for a while, so I think they've taken all these really nice photos of it uh, a little while ago, quite a while ago. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately this place has changed quite a lot, and uh, it's most probably because of human interactions, like global warming and pollution and all that jazz. But um, yes, I'm gonna create the pink version of this place. And I, this thing just turned out so damn nice. I don't know how I managed to pull it off in just one go, but I am really happy with how this looks. You know, some places that I build within City Skylines, they take ages and ages and ages, and they never really come to how I want them to turn out. But this was a pretty much instant, I was like, yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> with, with, that's a wrap, I'm happy with that. Uh, so that's something that we're gonna definitely keep somewhere, even if we do change a lot of this map. I'd like to have a pink lake somewhere around the map. Um, but guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm glad you all buzzed for the new series. I am absolutely busting to start working on the city and finish this map, but we've got like one more episode left to finish up everything and I'll give you a good flyover of how we've been uh, making this place take shape. Before I sign off, I do want to say a big thanks to the people supporting me on Patreon. Matthew Lewis, Ronan Kelly, Stephen Bodassa, Jordan Maiden, Simone Peachy, JPK, Phil Garrett, Leo Horton, and somebody's name that I'm going to try really hard to pronounce, Lucas Cork Uti. Lucas Cork... Oh, okay, try and say Lucas Cork Uti really fast. <laughs> it's really difficult to say. Uh, but nonetheless, thank you so much, dude, for your support, and thank you to all the people supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!